Hello everyone and welcome to the channel. I'm Emmanuel, I'm a Boeing 737 pilot and a member of PMDG's tech team. Welcome to this tutorial video on the A3 landing mode for ILS approaches using the head-up display in the PMDG Boeing 737. Now, the knowledge and information gathered for this video are primarily from approved documents such as FCOMS and the official manufacturer's pilot's guide and also from some chats I've had with some pilots operating the 737 using a heads-up display. But here's the disclaimer that I myself have never flown a 737 with a heads-up display installed, so please take the information like that. So, let's prepare for the ILS approach using the heads-up display. Now, if we have a look into the manufacturer's guidance, then for ILS approaches, it is recommended to use the A3 approach mode of the heads-up display. This does not only provide a semi-independent source of information, in that the head-up display still uses the raw data from the airplane sensors, but all the processing is done using the computer of the heads-up display, so you have a semi-independent source of information here. Let's quickly review the most important points that we have for this arrival and the most important things we need to understand. First of all, the brightness of the heads-up display should be adjusted so that you can see through the indicators and through what you have over here so that your view on the landing runway and on the outside environment is unobstructed. So let's quickly do that. We can see by looking outside right now that I've already dimmed the display down quite a bit. By default, if we go into auto brightness, things are going to be quite a bit brighter. But I have a feeling we can dim it down a little bit further. So th this is what we have right now. And if we just dial it down a little bit more, then this might be just about it. So the reason we are dimming the head-up display down is because of the technique that you are supposed to use when you are operating with a head-up display. You should not focus on the hot indications, but instead you should focus on what you are seeing outside the airplane and only use the head-up display as a second layer of information here. The goal is to look through the information, not to look on top of them. So, oh. Let's revise the most important pieces of information that we need for the arrival. First of all, our flight path symbol. This shows us exactly where the plane is going. Wherever this symbol is pointed at is where you are going to end up. Next we have our speed deviation scale. So this right now is quite large because as you can see on the left hand side here, we are flying about 30 knots faster than the predicted or rather than the commanded speed. Now, the deviation bar up here comes in reference of the current airspeed to the MCP selected speed. The height of the flight path symbol over here, so around about this, represents 5 knots of deviation. So right now, since we are going approximately 30 knots faster, we see the bar at its maximum because the limit is 15 knots of deviation. The next important symbol to understand is on the left this little triangle over here. This shows us if we are gaining, maintaining or losing energy. So since the symbol is just about next to that little wing of the flight path symbol, we are currently maintaining approximately a constant energy level. Now. I'm saying a constant energy level because obviously we are losing potential energy in terms of altitude, but you can see how this entire symbol is located below the horizon line. Traffic. Traffic. Okay, we can disregard this little gentleman down there for now. Now, let's have a look at the next important information. If this little symbol is on top of the flight path vector, then we are gaining energy. If it's below the flight path vector, we are losing energy. So, in an optimal case, in order to simplify your scan flow, all you need to look at on the approach is to make sure that the flight path symbol is on the runway, the localizer and glide slope lines are centered, and then if you look at the speed deviation scale up here, 
Uh, that is close to the uh, zero position and the triangle is in the middle position directly next to the wing as it is right now then you basically know that you are on path for your approach so you can really focus your attention outside on just that little bit up here if you need to and you're going to get all the relevant information for flying your airplane now, let's go ahead and review a couple of the symbols from the AFCOM that we need to think about. So here is our AFCOM, and there is a few symbols that we quickly need to talk about. One of them is the glide slope deviation line. Now, this is displayed as the horizontal line and references the uh, glide slope reference line. This line is basically um, simply your glide slope. And then you have the localizer indication, which is the vertical indication. Note that these are a lot more sensitive in the head-up display than they are in the standard primary flight display. In particular, they are eight times more sensitive than your PFD is. So just keep that in mind. They are going to be very, very sensitive and it is going to be quite a challenge to actually maintain the glide slope by manually following those. With a little bit of practice, however, you will be able to follow the glide slope and the localizer very, very accurately using the head-up display. Let's quickly search for a couple other symbols that we need to talk about. So, these are the flare cues. Now, we are going to fly this approach in the A3 mode, since it is an ILS approach. And we have the A3 flare command available for this. The A3 flare command is initially displayed 2 to 3 degrees directly below the guidance cue at 105 feet above the runway elevation. The symbol flashes for one second and then rises towards the guidance queue at a rate proportional to the expected flare pitch rate. At an altitude between 45 and 55 feet, the flare command and guidance queue meet and continue rising to command the flare maneuver until touchdown. So basically all you need to do is to keep the flare command within your flight path vector and then the airplane is going to guide you during the flare. Do not expect 100% smooth touchdown from this, but rather expect a very good landing, let's call it that way, a textbook landing. That is what you can expect from it. So, the last thing we need to look at is going to be the runway symbol. And the runway symbol is going to show up approximately from 300 feet onwards. And the runway edge is going to be shown on your heads-up display so that you basically can land the airplane just by looking at the heads-up display, which allows us to fly the landing all the way down to a category 3 minima hand-flown without the need to use the automation for that. Now, we can quickly have a look into the AFCOM what that is going to look like. And here it is. What we see up on the screen right here is the A3 mode of the heads-up display. As you can see, it is quite a decluttered display where we basically have our flight path vector over here. We have the flight director in the middle, the speed deviation line up here. And then we have the runway like this. And with this, you can actually hand fly a category 3 ILS approach down to a cat 3A minima of the 50 feet radio altitude. Now, be aware that at the point where I'm recording this, there is currently a bug in between the PMDG and Microsoft Flight Simulator, which causes the lines to be displaced due to some magnetic variation issues. That is something that is still being worked on, so if this symbol is currently out of place, then I do apologize for that, but it is something that is still under investigation by PMDG. Now looking at the A3 mode display, you will initially find it a little bit strange that the speed and altitude tapes are both going missing. But 
we are going to fly the airplane primarily based on the information down here on the flight path vector so there is absolutely no need for any of this information that is going to be removed from the display also note we are going to have the three degree line of the approach provided that a three degree line has been entered on the control panel so if you keep this line on the aiming point on the 1000 foot marker then you are basically on a three degree approach now i'm going to talk you through this as we fly the approach because we have to take into consideration that many ILSs in Microsoft Flight Simulator are inaccurate and therefore on the final stages of the approach you might have to do a little bit of um, hand flying to get yourself aligned perfectly. Note that the head-up display is equipped with an approach warning system which basically indicates you when you are deviating too much from your specified approach parameters and that is going to show approach warn up here on the HUD and that is a mandatory go around in real life. Now for flight simulation purposes I would suggest to disregard this because of the inaccuracies of ILSs in Microsoft Flight Simulator so you are going to fly a lot of go arounds if you follow this prompt every time while there is really no real need to do so because the simulator just isn't that accurate. Now that is something for Sobo to improve but that is what it is at the, moment of, at the moment of this recording. Apart from that, you have your airspeed indication on the left over here, and you have your barometric altitude on the right over here, and the vertical speed is shown on here as well. Now, the commanded airspeed is showing up here, that is what your MCP speed is set to, and that is what the speed deviation scale is going to be based on. Now let's quickly look into the setup we need to do to fly an approach like this. Basically what we need is the heads up display to be configured with the runway length, the field elevation and the approach angle. So first of all make sure that primary mode is active for the approach and then A3 mode will be on the standby line. In order for A3 to arm we need to select the ILS active on both sides. And now you can see IMC A3 is armed. Next up, we need to enter our landing elevation and our landing runway length. And we can get those out of the approach charts. So if we have a quick look into the Navigraph charts over here, first of all, we have the runway elevation, which is 15 feet, as we see up here. So we click on the runway button. Now it shows EL rather than just E. Now we can enter 15. Now we click the runway button again, and this brings up the landing runway length shown in L and then the M beyond that indicates that we are entering in meters and not in feet. So if we go to the airport chart now and take the landing runway 06 left then we'll find we have 3270 meters of runway available. So we enter 3270, press enter and now the information is basically stored in the system. Also we need to enter the glide slope angle. The default angle is 3 degrees and since that coincides with the approach angle that we are going to fly, you can find that on the ILS chart down here, glide slope, 3 degrees. Since that coincides already, I'm just going to leave it as it is. And with that, the head-up display is prepared for our approach. Now let's jump forward a little bit and actually head on to fly this very approach. So we're currently intercepting the glide slope and we can see how the localizer and the glide slope lines in the A3 mode are just about coming into view. We have the localizer line over here and then we have the glide slope line over there and then we have our three degree line. Now in the optimal case once we are fully established the glide slope line is going to lie pretty much on the three degree line and the flight path vector will be just in the middle of those. Pretty much as we can see it right now. Also note that we are going to use the speed deviation scale as I explained earlier on. So right now we can see that we are approximately 5 knots faster than we should be and if we need to we can verify this by looking at the left. This is our indicated airspeed up here, 178 knots and then we have the commanded airspeed up in the top left. Quite a bit out of view because it really is not that essential for our approach. So, passing 4DME, we can start configuring the airplane. Gear down, flap 15.
and flaps 25. And finally, flaps 40. Now just about make sure that you've got the correct VRA selected, as I did not. Here we go, that's better. And here we go. So, what can we see right now? We can see the 3 degree line is pretty much located directly on the puppies and on the aiming point. Also we can see that the turbulence we get from Microsoft Flight Simulator is quite a bit stronger than what you would get in real life and this becomes quite apparent when using the heads up display. So keep in mind the localizer and the glide slope scales up here are 8 times more sensitive than they would be on the primary flight display. But as long as you keep the flight path symbol exactly on the aiming point, that is all we need. So here we've got the runway currently drawn up. A little bit of deviation here thanks to uh, Microsoft Atmosphere, disconnecting autopilot. And then we basically just keep the fly path symbol on here. There comes the flare cue. And that was a bit excessive of me. And here we go. And we're down. In the rollout, we get our rollout guidance shown over here. Which basically resembles the localizer that we um, have tuned. And that is really all there is to it. That's how you fly the A3 approach. Now, I've used the autopilot for the majority of this so that I could focus on the explanations in the video. However, you can fly this entirely by hand as well. Note that once you are vacating the runway, you should deselect the A3 mode and go back to primary mode. And with this, I'm going to conclude this video. Thank you very much for watching, I hope that you have learned something and found this interesting. And if you did, then please do let me know in the comments below if you knew most of this already or if this has been something new to you as well. Thank you very much for watching, if you want to support the channel you can do so by using the Buy Me a Coffee link that you can find in the video description below, or by becoming a channel member which is going to give you exclusive early access to new videos and in first class membership even the ability to request your own videos. Thank you very much for watching, I hope that you have learned something, and I'm looking forward to see you all again on the next one.